Hey everybody, on today's Locked On Bama, we're going to talk recruiting again, as we always do on Locked On Bama. And we're also going to talk about SEC Media Days coming up. I'm going to be going to SEC Media Days. At least I think I am. Both of my parents got COVID, so I don't know what I'm going to be doing. But I'm probably going to be going to SEC Media Days. And it also lets you know that SEC Media Days, well, it's pretty easy to get credentials to go to SEC Media Days because I got them. So I'll be talking about that. And uh, so stick with us here on Locked On Bama. Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robbins, me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? Good, good. Tomorrow media days. I mean, it's the the kickoff of the new football season. I hope that the coaches get lots of questions this week about their football teams and everything just getting eaten up by NIL and portal and 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 realignment. Uh, I just wanted I just want to talk football. No, we did. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. You can see the little LinkedIn graphic if you're watching on YouTube there in the upper right-hand corner. And I'll tell you about LinkedIn in just a minute, but uh, they're one of our great new sponsors. want to appreciate them so much. Jimmy, I'm, I'm going to start with something I didn't even mention in the very beginning. Um, I was fortunate enough to talk to somebody about uh, Alabama basketball. They, they've begun getting ready for their tour and um, was able to find out a little bit. I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm hearing incredibly, incredibly good things about Brandon Miller. Uh, Brandon Miller apparently is is a thing. He's going to be a big deal um, when it comes down. He'd be the player on our team. And look, he's not the biggest dude we've ever had. He's uh, he's he's a really good size. Um, he's got sort of a maybe a Kevin Durantish esque free um, physique. Not um, maybe not quite that strong, but you know Durant looks kind of skinny. But like not too skinny. I think Brandon Miller is skinnier than that. Um, but I heard good things about um, uh, Jaden Bradley, uh, who is you know he's he's coming along nicely. He had a, a bit of an injury, um, but he's coming along nicely. Uh, Namari Burnett looking pretty good. Noah Clowney, another guy that's going to be coming in with his class, um, very very impressive. Again, this is all just the beginning. So I mean. Maybe some of it is being oversold to me a little bit. I don't think so. I think that this basketball team is going to be really, really good. I know that we had a lot of turnover. We're missing a lot of guys. But, again, sometimes it may be addition by subtraction in terms of the chemistry may not have been there. And I say all this knowing that J.D. Davison, who I put, will pull for from now on till forever, he's an Alabama alum, um, has been killing it in the summer league. He had a big game again, almost had a triple-double last night. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about basketball. I didn't think I'd be starting there considering that, um, you know, it's, it's we're right in the middle of SEC media days football-wise. But I just want to throw some positive vibes out there about the basketball team. Yeah, uh, the Brandon Miller thing is, like, awesome to hear, and it, but, but also not super surprising. I know during recruiting and after recruiting, me and you both compared – not his skill set and not his game necessarily, but compared his potential impact to what Jabari Smith did for Auburn a year ago. I think Brandon Miller could be that kind of kid uh, in, in terms of being a freshman that's the best player on the team and clearly is an NBA talent and sort of leads the way for an improved season. And I think in that sense, Brandon Miller could be Alabama's Jabari Smith in that way. Uh, although it's not not fair to say, hey, he's going to be the third pick in the draft and be the, the sort of, you know, national impact player Jabari was. But all, all good news there. It's all to me about developing chemistry because I like the talent level on the team. And I, I think you made a great point with J.D. Davison playing so well in the summer league that really chemistry has so much to do with everything. Last year's team, for whatever reason, it just didn't blend I mean, it's, it's, you know, the, the parts were pretty good. There's good players on that team. The parts were fine. The sum of it was not, and or, or not as good as it should have been. And maybe this year, maybe this year, there's a, a better blend. And, 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 and if they are, uh, this could be a really fun basketball season. 
And that's why I think this particular year is a great year to have this European tour. It gives them some extra practice time to develop some chemistry. Uh, so, yeah, it works out really great that they're going to be heading to uh, Spain and France here very shortly, and that's going to be really cool. Uh, Jimmy, I need to take this moment to tell everybody about LinkedIn. As the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs make it easier for you to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the people you want to interview faster and for free. It's the best. I'm telling you, LinkedIn Jobs, fantastic. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so networks can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you wanna to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million jobs job seekers visit LinkedIn. I don't know why I keep saying million, but I am going to keep doing it. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Um, let me be sure I didn't get all my live reads in here, Jimmy. Sometimes I'm, I'm a threat to not do all I should, and I almost did it. I'm going to tell you about the NFL top uh, 50. Look, if you're watching this on Sunday, it's July 17th. If you're watching this on Monday, it's July 18th. And today, uh, on July 18th, which is really tomorrow, which NFL stars moved the betting line the most? Starting July 18th, Monday, Locked On gives you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from odds makers at Bet Online. Available July 18th on Locked On NFL or wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Okay, so let's go back to SEC Media Days here for a second, Jimmy. Um. As I said, both my parents got COVID, so I'm not 100%. You know, how does that affect a 50-year-old man? Well, my dad still uh, is president of, of our family business, so if, if he's not able to come in, my brother is going to be gone, and if he's not able to come in, then I might not be able to go to media days like I want to, but I have access to it. I'm looking forward to it. I do want to go and vote and do all that fun stuff. I don't really care about doing an interview. I really don't. I want to go. I want to go get a feel for the whole thing. I haven't been to media days in a long time. I just want to see, you know, other folks. I want to get on Radio Row. I want to do all that cool stuff. I want to I want to pimp uh, Locked on Bama. But is there anything you think surprising could come from this? You know, last year, all the buzz was the Oklahoma-Texas stuff. It sort of broke around this time. Um, is there any reason to think there could be any big-time news breaking at SEC media days? I doubt there would be breaking news. Uh, maybe whispers I'm interested in, you know, in terms of, you know, the, the rumors, you know, regarding realignment and expansion. I personally think that the word is going to be the SEC loves where they're at right now and they're not moving. And, and, and I believe that for now. For now also means today. Like I said, July 17th, July 18th, it could change by July 21st. But I, I do think the SEC likes where they are right now. You got to remember in, in, in this race to 20, like so many people want the SEC and the Big Ten to be on, that means now you're cutting the pie 20 ways. It only makes sense if there's a much, much bigger pie. You only want to add teams if the check your school gets at the end of the year is bigger. Uh, that's one thing. On the other hand, you can't let the Big Ten run up to – 24 and take four teams that are a better fit for your league and now they got 24 teams and and but you know you got to factor that in as well to an extent but uh i i think realignment i think all the coaches are going to be in lockstep you, you watch this luke this will be the nil word all week love nil love that the players are getting money long overdue let let's let, let let's let's keep nil but we need a uniformity of rules. Everybody needs to be doing the same thing, whatever that thing is. And, and that, that will be the buzzword. You can bet 14 coaches will talk about it. Anywhere from Vandy to Alabama is going to agree. NIL is great. We need uniformity of rules. Yeah, but it's funny you say uniformity of rules. I mean, there's always been – certain rules for 17. So look, I, I get 
everybody being upset. I get Saban's rant. I think it made a lot of sense. I also think when we open this this Pandora's box, this is what we all should have expected. And I don't know how you wrangle it back in. Now, the only way you wrangle it back in is to let the market take care of itself, which I think eventually what will happen is everybody's going to pay a bunch of money initially. And then some, some teams are going to go, I'm not seeing any return on this. And they're going to right. start stealing back. And then, you know, what's going to probably happen is the, the good teams are going to get even better. And, you know, the one thing they tried to increase with this is parity and it's going to bite them right in the took us. So that's my take. I mean, think about if you think about Alabama fans all, you know, and, and that's what boosters are. It's funny how we use boosters in a certain way and fans a certain way. It's, it's the same thing. Boosters, I guess, generally either have or are more willing to support the team financially with their money, <laughs> but they're fans. <laughs> and the fans also support the team with their money by buying tickets, even buying a T-shirt supports the, the, the program in some way. So everybody's supporting the team. It's just a matter of how much. Well, let's say if Alabama's fans, you know, support the team and, and give the team five million dollars and Mississippi State's team fans and boosters, they support the team and give them five million dollars. And, and, and Alabama goes 12 and 0, and Mississippi State goes six and six. I wonder. I bet Alabama might get five million again next year. I doubt Mississippi State will, right? I mean, it's exactly what you just said. I think, I think the good teams uh, will stay good, and and the 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 middle of the road teams will slink further and further back because they're less likely to get the year after year after year after year fan money that that the Alabamas and Ohio States will get because. Their fans will will see something for their money, or at least as long as people like Nick Saban and Ryan Day are running those programs. That is true, Jimmy. We also want to tell everybody about Bet Online. Bet Online, you know about Bet Online. They're awesome. There's the graphic I've been wanting. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's. MLB, regular season and playoffs, NFL futures, college football futures, whatever you want. They got it at Bet Online. It's your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scopes. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. Bet Online is where the game starts. Jimmy, finally, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, recruiting. Not a lot to report just yet. We really thought after um, Pete Golding's elephant emoji tweet that we may have some news. There is no news yet. Now, um, Jelani Thurman is a tight end that we both liked a lot. He is committed to Ohio State today, Sunday the 17th. Um, there are some guys that are going to be announcing this week. Malik Muhammad, July 20th. This is a uh, four-star cornerback out of Texas. Uh, Martavius Collins, a 2024 four-star tight end out of Georgia. He'll be committing on the 20th. Malik Bryant will be committing on July 23rd. Uh, four-star linebacker, probably down to Alabama and Miami there. Miles McVay on August 11th. Um, so, And then you could have at any time Oleus Allenon, uh, Caleb Downs, yep. who Alabama has moved into a great spot for Caleb Downs. We talked about that in the last podcast. Suntareen Perkins, still on flip watch, still could happen anytime. Uh, four star athlete committed to Ole Miss right now, trending to Alabama. And then Jalen Mbakwe from uh, Pinson, Ch Clay Chalkville, 2024 four star slash five star cornerback that a lot of people really love. So there's a lot of potential commitments out there. Uh, and then you mentioned Cormani McLean wearing a boatload of Alabama gear um, at, at a recent event this past weekend. Um, any other recruiting tidbits? Well, I think just through that list, I mean, I think that Alabama's likely to get a couple of those kids. Uh, I'd watch that junior tight end uh, from Rome, Georgia. I don't know a lot about him yet. That's something I'm going to dive into a lot this week, just simply because it's a new name. It's a 24 name. But let me tell you, Perry Thompson, the wide receiver from Foley, who's already committed to Alabama, his name seems to be ascending in various recruiting services. Uh, not a surprise, as, as big and fast as he is. Uh, and Jalen Mbakwe, perhaps the number one prospect in the state, in the 24 group, he could be committing to Alabama soon. If Alabama starts out 24 with Mbakwe, Perry Thompson, and this uh, big-bodied 6'3", 240-pound uh, tight end from Rome, Georgia, uh, wow, nice start to uh, to 24 if that happens. Olas Allenon could be committing uh, in the next week to 10 days. Uh, 
this is a real interesting one because it seems to be trending Miami. Uh, everything feels like, okay, he's enamored with Miami. We know how they're utilizing NIL. They've been the least shy team out there in terms of how aggressive they are, the face of it. They don't have a collective. They have what's actually called a directive because a, a collective means, hey, it's a big group of us doing this. Directive means it's one guy. And they, they've got a directive, John Ruiz, uh, who is not shy about saying what he's doing for Miami athletes. And that's okay. That's apparently within the rules, although the NCAA has gone down there to investigate and ask questions. Uh, but uh, Allen seems to be trending Miami, but don't rule out him committing to Alabama. He, he, he knows the Alabama program really well. He has a lot of respect for Alabama's ability to develop offensive linemen. Uh, this is a kid whose dad played in NFL Europe, who, who was also an offensive lineman. So I, I'm not going to predict Allen is going to sign or pick Al Alabama, but uh, I also think it's foolish to uh, rule that out just yet. Uh, I, I think it could be Alabama. One other thing to throw out there, and I think you and I were both happy to see this, um, this was something that was reported on Bama Online. I'm sure you guys at On3 have been doing a job with this as well. Hunter Osborne apparently is back in the mix with Alabama. Um, this is something you and I have talked about uh, over the pod that at one time it looked like you may be headed to Texas. Another time it looked like you may be headed to Clemson. Um, but you and I like him a lot. We like Hunter Osborne a lot. And he comes from a feeder program, if you ask me. I mean, Hewitt Trustful, just one of those 7A schools that plays in the toughest classification in the toughest area in the state of Alabama. I mean, he's going against uh, Thompson every single year. He's going against Hoover every single year. You know, he, he's going to be just facing off against the best of the best, Oak Mountain. And, um, yeah, now Alabama's back in the thick of it with him, it sounds like. And, in fact, they could be on the verge of maybe securing a commitment. That would be wonderful. In my opinion, yeah, I'm a I, oh, I agree 100. I'm a big Hunter Osborne fan. Uh, I hate that some people out there may look at this like it's some Peter Woods plan B. And and while I would admit that perhaps Peter Woods not being in this class has opened some doors for a couple of defensive linemen, that's probably true. The fact of the matter is, as far as I'm concerned, Hunter Osborne should have been plan A all along. You know, it's not a matter of is this kid good enough uh, to take. Uh, it's just a matter of there was tremendous depth uh, in state and in the region at that position. And there was only so many Alabama could make, you know, the highest priority uh, because but, but that doesn't mean that there weren't several that Alabama wasn't prioritizing that are that are really good players. Hunter Osborne's one of those. I, I think he's fantastic. I'm. I think his upside is as good as anyone's. And, 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 you know, to me, he projects as an interior pass rusher. Those are so hard to find, and they're so valuable. A guy that you can line up, head up with a guard or between the center and the guard or between the guard and the tackle, just an interior player who can pressure the quarterback. Uh, that's just vital. Yep. Big fan of Hunter Osborne right here on this podcast. Uh, Jimmy? Appreciate your time today. We will be back tomorrow with more Locked on Bama. Until then, everybody, roll tide. Roll tide.